here on ABC News 4, we're taking you behind the badge, introducing you to the men and women of the low country who keep us safe. Today, we're meeting a Charleston police officer who's helping inspire and shape the next generation of law enforcement. He says his dream has always been to help others, and he's making sure new officers do just that. From an early age, Officer Brandon Farah was itching to put on the uniform. My parents always told me when I was younger that I would always want to dress up as a police officer for Halloween and I always want to watch cop shows. He grew up in upstate New York and joined his local police department's Explorer program when he was 14. The Explorer program is designed to give high school students an inside look at policing. Doing things throughout the Explorer post, I found out that this is what I wanted to do for my career. They even get trained in using firearms and how to respond to 911 calls. I went on my first ride along and I can still remember it to this day. And I just thought, I was like, this is awesome. I, I, I want to do this for my career. It just looks like so much fun. Farah was an explorer for five years and after graduating from Coastal Carolina University, joined the Charleston Police Department in 2020. When we got hired, actually, it was in the heart of the George Floyd incident. If people are coming into law enforcement now, it means they truly want to make an impact in their community and do what's right and do what, you know, treat the community fairly. After realizing how much the Explorer program helped him, he decided to return to the program, this time as a mentor and leader. So I feel like I have a unique ability to put things in a way that they understand because it was just a short time ago that I was in their same shoes and then making sure that I'm putting my best self forward for the kids because that's what I wanted and that's what made an impact on me. He's also on the motorcycle unit and uses his bike as a conversation starter. I have that conversation with them because now it gives them a piece of me and what their police department is doing in their community. Ferris says he wants to be a trainer or supervisor one day to help new police recruits once they get sworn in. That's not oh, do not move. But right now, he's helping mentor the explorers and says he sees his younger self in each one who walks through the door. So listening to their concerns and then hopefully being able to have a productive conversations of how we could break down those concerns and those barriers is really the goal for me. It's unreal. It really is. It's just nothing that I really, I feel like when you're young and you're a teenager to look that far ahead, it's kind of hard to picture what your life will be. So to see I'm exactly where I wanted to be is just very fulfilling. Take to get a speed bump in your neighborhood. It's a question we've been asking the city of Charleston today. Take a look at this map. This is Canterbury Road in West Ashley. Part of the street owned by the city. The other part by the state. Our Tara Jabor spoke to a frustrated neighbor about why he says it's a struggle to get a speed bump. It's a story you'll only see on ABC News 4. Carlos Fernandez has lived here on Canterbury Road for 25 years. He's been asking for a speed hump to slow down traffic. Now we have a lot of young families with kids, pets, uh, like more buses, more traffic, and therefore that is a problem for especially the young kids and those who walk the streets. Fernandez says people drive too fast on Canterbury Road. Uh, we've had accidents on this street before. As I recall, some year we had a, a UPS truck uh, ran into a FedEx truck. It's not a very wide street. We've had our mailboxes now counting by people going too fast. For years, he says he's asked the city of Charleston to install speed humps. And uh, we've been pretty much told every time we ask that uh, they'll look into it and they'll do a study to determine if in fact we need a speed humps or not. Fernandez says he's most frustrated seeing streets nearby get speed humps. I just feel like we're being, we're just being passed over and it's the same story all over again. Be a study, get away, blah, 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 and nothing ever happens. The city of Charleston says it received the petition and help is on the way. As well, soon as uh, uh, school's back in session um, in January, we'll place counters and get some um, traffic data. Somerville says the data has to meet certain criteria. Then they'll look to see if there is a pattern of speeding. And the main one is the, is the volume. We, at a minimum, we have to have 350 vehicles a day. Um, you know, the street that is requesting it, 90% of it has to be all residential. If that criteria is met, then the city will check with fire and police to ensure it does not interfere with responses. Then the project could go before a committee and then council. Uh, I'll believe when I see it. I've heard that story before. 
Working for you, Tara Jabor, ABC News 4. Ross Appel is the city councilman for Fernandez's district. He told ABC News 4 he'll push for this project to be funded, provided the speed study supports such measures. His full statement is on our website, abcnews4.com, under top stories.